Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Today's subject is Afghanistan and Taliban. I will start it from a holy verse of the Quran. Wala tahinu, wala tahdanu, antumul alawna in kuntum mumini. It could be translated, so do not weaken and do not grieve and you will be superior if you are true believers. Afghanistan is called the graveyard of empires. History tells us the superpowers tried to subjugate this country but never succeeded in their attempts. Russia with all its might occupied this country but finally failed to crush the will and spirit of freedom of the people. America, the only superpower at present, invaded it and in spite of its unchallengeable military power, had to finally withdraw. It spent more than two trillion dollars and lost four thousand men. This is a very disgraceful defeat which America has suffered from the hands of a very underdeveloped and unorganized forces in the world. The objectives, of course, were never to save Afghan or Afghani women, but the supporters, the superpowers, was in a bloodthirsty mood. The tragedy of 9-11 dictated the need for a revenge. World knows that Afghani people had not been involved in the attacks of 9-11 at all. America start bombarded Afghanistan in 2001 and have continued uh, right to the end. To provide a cover story regarding the necessity of invasion, they could not openly state revenge as a reason. They grabbed on to the terrible condition of women's rights in the country. It was true, the Afghan women lived in miserable conditions from last 50 years, but then so did Afghan men. One in the three people were at risk of starvation, but nobody take those things into account. However, the victory of Afghans, Afghans has uh, given a fresh courage and determination to enslaved nations of the world who are still suffering under the yoke of political, financial and military dominance of more powerful nations. The so-called civilized nations are in interfering in the affairs of poor and needy people of the countries, in their words, the less civilized nations, and making them militant and violent groups. This all was in the name of freedom, but enslave their opponents. The promise, they promise development, but instead given them poverty and dependence. They create warlords and mercenaries, people who otherwise could have been engaged in agriculture, industry, education and useful activities are turned into fighters and murderers, war mongers, drug dealers and weapon suppliers in the world. These things are done on a large scale by all champions of liberty supporters of the democracy and promoters of the progress world. This shows that there has been hypocrisy, greediness and immorality behind most of these superpower uh, builders. But beyond political, beyond geopolitical lessons, there are very relevant questions about what lies ahead for Afghanistan. After all, their last period of in power, the Taliban enforced a brutal code 
brutal code influenced by their interpretation of religion. This time around the armed movement says things will be different, only time will tell us. After Taliban take over uh, the Kabul, there was a rush to leave Afghanistan. It is also true that Western supported dispensation that has just been replaced was unable to run a clean administration or provide security to Afghanistan. In fact, stories of corruption within Kabul's corridors of power were common. Western supporters were unable to plug the leaks. The Taliban, for their part, are not known to have any financial corruption or they will make it in present or in future and have pledged to restore law and order in the country. There are many challenges ahead. The challenge for Taliban after formation of a caretaker government is to form an inclusive setup that represents all the country's ethnic groups, tribes and religious denominations and qualified women who can contribute positively in the development of the country. If Taliban seek to create a state on the basis of fiqh of Imam Abu Hanifa ta'ala anhu, without bringing others to the table, Afghanistan may well slip back into the civil war. All groups must have a say in the new Afghanistan government. While it would be navy to assume the Taliban will give the green light to a liberal parliamentary democracy, a representative system grounded in Afghanistan's religious and cultural realities. Now, it is the responsibility of the present government to put an end to wars and conflicts, a genuine morality, a sense of responsibility, and a sense of accountability to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must be instructed and adopted as the foundation and the bedrock of every society, nation, and the government. Otherwise, humanity would be moving from one crisis to another, another. Concept of equality and dignity of every human being should be promoted in all cases. I can say you, the Taliban, have a great challenge ahead of reconstruction of a distracted nation. You require abundant fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reconciliatory spirit and forgiveness. You must shun revenge, hate and injustice. You must have magnanimity, forbearance and moderation. You must rise you must raise a rise to the occasion and present the best example of nation building. You should guard against injustice, discrimination and the mistakes which you or some of you have committed in the past. I believe that the fall of Kabul and victory of the Taliban has produced far-reaching effects. A full review would be possible only in the future. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you and guide you in the building um, your future and your nation. Jazakumullah khair. Asana